Hi, hello everyone. Welcome to Beginner's Guide. In today's tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to create a student management system using PHP. So this tutorial is basically going to help you understand the crude operations of a PHP programming. In crude operation, I'm sure that you know C stands for create, R stands for read, U stands for update, and D stands for delete. So we are going to understand these concepts by creating this simple project. So let me just show you what you can do with this particular project. So as you can see them here, there is this button name called Add Student. When you click on this Add Student, it will take you to this form where you can able to enter the student details. They say I'm going to enter the student first name as John, the second name as Doe, and then the email address is I would say John at gmail.com. In the program of study, let me say business. So when I click submit, you will see this particular student information has been added to the student database. Now, if you wanted to update, let's say, for example, for this particular student, Alex, I wanted to update the information because this student is not doing a computer science. Let's say, for example, this student is doing uh, mathematics. So if you click on this update, I'm sure that you can able to see the student details that are already displayed here. The only thing that you wanted to update them here is a program of study. Let's say here I'm going to say mathematics. So when I click update, you will see now computer science has been updated to a mathematics. Let's say you wanted to delete a certain student information. When you click on this button, the student information will be deleted from the database. So this is exactly what we are going to learn in this particular tutorial. Now let's get started. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to start your local server. In this case, I'm using a XAMPP. If you are, if you are using a XAMPP or WAMP or MAMP, whatever. So make sure to start a server. So in this case, it's Apache. I'm also going to start the database. I'm going to use a MySQL database that is come with this XAMPP server. So after that, you go to your XAMPP folder. I'm sure that you know where to find the XAMPP folder. So you can go to the operating system. In this case, I installed the XAMPP folder in Windows C. Go to XAMPP, then you will find the folder name as, when you go to the XAMPP, and then you will find the folder name as HTDocs. You're going to open this one, and this is where you're going to create your project. So for this particular project, I'm going to create a folder name as student management. And then I'm going to hit enter. And then here in the URL, I'm going to type CMD. It will open my command prompt. So here I'm going to type COD that is called space dot. When I hit enter, by default, this folder will be opened with my VS Code text editor. By the way, I'm going to use the VS Code text editor for this particular project. But if you prefer using any other text editor, you're free to use. But I recommend you to use VS Code text editor because it, uh, it has got a lot of nice cool features. So now I have the folder. Here what I'm going to do, I'm going to create my basic PHP. I'm going to call this one as a home.php. So here I'm going to create a basic HTML boilerplate. So after creating the basic HTML boilerplate, let me just do this. So here what I want to do is, initially I wanted to create this form, as you can see them here. So this is a form that will be used to collect the data. So now I wanted to design this form. If you look at this form, there is some nice CSS that has already put in place. I used Bootstrap for the same. So to create this form, we are going to make use of the Bootstrap framework. So go to Google, type Bootstrap. You will be able to see the first link that is official website to the Bootstrap. That is getbootstrap.com. You are going to click on the first link. So this is Bootstrap version 5. As you can see them here, this is Bootstrap version 5.3. 5 so once you head into this particular web page, just click on this docs. It will take you to the document page. Now here, if you just scroll down, you would be able to see this particular part where it says Bootstrap CSS and JS. Click here so that this code will be copied and come here. What you can do, you can just replace this code that you created here with the code that you copied. So basically what we are trying to do them here is we are just trying to copy the bootstrap library into our design. Now what you can do, you can go to your browser again, type localhost here, and then you would be able to see the folders that are part of the htdocs. So here if you could remember the folder that I created, here is the student management, I'm going to click on this one. So if you could see this one, I'm able to see the result as hello world. So this is simply because in my code, if you see, there is this H1 uh, with an element name called hello world. This is exactly what we are able to see them there. So now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to remove all of these things because I don't want to have this part. 
I've removed this. I'm just going to remain with the link uh, for the bootstrap. So here the title, I'm going to say student management. So when you save this one, if you go back to your browser and refresh the browser, you will not be able to see anything here because in the body section, there is nothing. So in the body section, basically I wanted to create this form with a button name called summit. So for the same, I'm just going back to the same bootstrap in the search bar. If you could see this one, I'm going to type form control. When you hit form control, I'm sure that you will be redirected to this particular page. In the left side, if you see this one, that is forms. Now we are in the form control. So now what I want to do is I just wanted to click on this overview. When you click on this overview, when you just scroll down a bit, you would be able to see a form like this. There is this form and there is this type of form, things like that. So what I'm, what I'm going to do is I just wanted to have a form like this. So for the same, I'm just going to copy this. And then I will come here to my home.php. So I'm going to paste them here. So after pasting this one, just save and go back to your browser. Now try to refresh the browser. Now I'm sure that you can able to see the design uh, that you can see them here in this particular page. Now I'm going to modify my code so that I can able to see a form like that. So my form will contain the following fields that is first name, last name, email and program of study. So for the same, go to your text editor again. So here, what I'm going to do, let me just create a div with a class name called container. I'm going to wrap this form inside this particular container. So I'm just going to cut this form tag that I copied from the bootstrap. So I'm going to place them inside the div. The first field that I wanted to have them here is what? A student first name. So I'm going to replace this email address label with a first name. That's the label. Now you can even delete this one. But you can just remain with a class for the form. And then input type for the first name is going to be text. And then... I don't want it to have an ID property. I don't need, so I'm just going to remove this. And then I'm just going to remove the other part as well so that I can just remain with input type. Uh, as text, class is going to be a form control. I'm going to add this property name called placeholder. So here I'm going to just pass the message saying, enter the student first name. So I'm going to save this one. Now what I'm going to do, I, I'm going to remove this part as well. I don't want this one. So this particular class due will have a label that says first name and then input type as text and this field. So I'm just going to remove the rest of the part to this part because I wanted to have the button as summit. So I'm going to delete this one. So if you could see this one. So the only thing that I have them here is the label and the input type and the button type. When I save this one, I'm going to my browser. I'm going to refresh this one now. Now I'm sure that you can able to see the label is first name. That is a text box that says enter the student first name. And then there is a button name called summit. So now what I want to do is I wanted to add a bit of margin on top and bottom so that I can bring this form a bit lower. So for the same, if you could go back to your home.php file. So here you have a class name called uh, container. So here I'm going to add a bootstrap class since I've already included the bootstrap library into my project. If you could see them here, there is a bootstrap library. So I can able to use the bootstrap class. So here inside the class, I'm going to use my that is margin on the y axis. I'm going to say let's say five. So when I add margin on the y axis, top and bottom will be assigned with five. That is margin. So when I click on this one, you should be able to see now there is a margin for this particular form. So now I have the first name field. So if you could look at the actual design, I have the last name, email and program of study. So the only thing that I'm going to do them here is I'm just going to copy this particular div. And then I'm going to paste them down there. So this time the label is not the first name, but the last name. So here form type is text. Everything else is same. So this one, instead of first name, I'm going to call this one as a last name. So I'm going to paste the same div again. So the next field is an email field. So here the label is going to be email. 
So input type in this case is going to be email because I wanted to collect the email from the student. So the placeholder is enter the student email address. So again, I'm going to copy and paste the same div. So the last field of our form is a program of study. So here the label is program of study. So input type is still going to be text. So the placeholder for this particular form is going to be enter the student program of study. When I save this one, you can go back to your browser and refresh. I'm sure that you are able to see all the fields that you can able to see them here like a original design. I'm sure that now we have managed to create this form. Now, the only thing that we need to do is I'm going to enter the first name. I'm going to enter the last name. I'm going to enter the email address. I'm going to enter the program of study. When I click on this button name called Summit, what I want to do is I want to send this information to my database. So once I say that you wanted to send this information to the database, what does that mean? You need to have a database where it can able to store these details that you are going to provide through these input boxes. Isn't it so? So for the same, I'm going to create a database. Now to create a database, you can just open the ZAMP control panel. Click here on this option name called admin. It will take us to the PHP my admin place where we are going to create our database. There are two ways that you can create a database. Either you can click on this option name called new or you can click on this databases. Let's say I'm going to click on this databases. So here it's asking me to enter the database name. So I'm going to give a name as student DB since I'm working with a student management system. I'm going to click on create. So here I need to create a table inside the database. Let me say the table name is student table like this. So now here I have to specify the number of columns. If you could look at the actual design, actually I'm going to store four datas. Yes, of course, technically the number of columns needs to be four. But in this case, I'm going to say five because in the actual design, I'm only collecting the student name, email address and the program of study. I'm not collecting the student ID. So in the sense, I'm going to make a dynamic student ID through this database just for the same reason. I created five columns because one is going to be for student ID. So student ID is going to be unique and it's going to be dynamic. So I'm going to click on this go. So I'm going to create the fields. The first one is an ID. I said this ID is going to be dynamic and then it's going to be unique. Just for the same reason, I'm going to click on this auto increment so that every student will have a new student ID. And then I'm going to set that to a primary key because the student ID has to be unique. So if you wanted to set a unique student ID, you have to make sure that this one is a primary key. So if you click on this drop down menu, there are different keys that you can able to see. Make sure to select the primary key. So the first field is a student ID. As I say, the next one is the first name. According to the form, the following one is the last name. And then the next one is an email address. The last field is a program of study. And then here I need to select the data types for the student ID. Let it be integer length. If you don't put anything for the integer data type by default, it will be 11. So you can put either 11 or maybe you can specify any number. I'm not going to put anything there because it's going to consider the default number that is 11. So for the first name, I'm going to say it will be 100 characters. Second one is going to be 100 characters. Email, let's say it will be 50 characters. Program of study it will be 50 characters. Remember, I... I said these are characters, which means the data type is varchar. So I'm going to just set the uh, I'm going to set the data type as varchar for each of these field. Now I have managed to create my table with the fields. Now only thing that I need to do is click on save button. Now my database is ready. This is a table which has five fields. So starting from ID up to the program of study. Now we need to write the logic that should able to connect this application to the database. So for that one, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a separate file for the database connection. So within this connection.php file, I'm going to write the logic that will help me to connect my database to my application. To connect your database to your PHP application, there are different PHP methods that can be used. But the one that I'm going to use them here is new MySQL I method. So this new MySQL I method will take four parameters. First one, is the server name since I'm using the local host so the server name is a local host the second parameter is the username for your local host by default my ZAM server username is root 
and then the next parameter has to be the password so the password by default it will be an empty string and then the final one will be the name of the database if you could remember the name of the database here is student db so i'm going to copy the database name remember you're going to use the database name not the table name so make sure to copy this database name instead of copying the table name i'm going to paste them here so remember this has to end there if you put them like this it might give you an error right so now this method is going to take four parameters the four parameters should be in this order in case if you change the order you will have an error when i say you will have an error you will not be able to connect your database to your application so i'm going to store this one into a variable a variable name can be anything in this case i'm going to use the variable name as connection so c o n n so what does that mean when you have an access to this variable we should have an access to the database just to prove that here i'm just going to use the if condition if i have an access to the connection variable simply means i have an access to the database so just to see that i'm going to say here database connection is successful just to see if we can have an access to the database just go to your browser so here remember i have created a connection.php file i'm just going to head over to that file when i click enter now you can able to see the message saying database connection is successful what does that mean i'm able to connect to my database from this uh, from this particular application now this if condition simply means we are displaying this message when you are able to connect to the database what if uh, let's say for example you misplace the database name like this instead of student database let's say you just say student in this case you are not going to connect to the database because the parameter is wrong you are going to get an error like this if you wanted to get this error message you can use this else statement in the else statement i'm going to use this die if you wanted to display the specific reason why that you are unable to connect to the database a php has a built in function name called my sequo i error method so this error method would take this connection variable as an argument what does that mean so instead of it's just displaying the error message it would actually give you the reason why you were unable to connect to the database so if i go back and refresh now you can able to see the error here is unknown database is simply saying that the database is not student is unknown so go and check your database name so in this case the database name is db when i say db i would able to get a message saying database connection our database connection is successful so in this case i don't wanted to display the message saying database connection is successful when my database connection is successful because i know that my database connection is successful i just wanted to display a message only when i'm failing to connect to the database so for the same what i'm going to do instead of saying echo database connection is successful i'm just going to use this die statement inside the if condition and then this message will be displayed when only when you're unable to connect to the database right so here i'm going to say when you're unable to connect to the database for that i'm going to use the logical note in that case there is no need for me to use this else statement what does that mean this particular error message will be displayed only when i am unable to connect my database to my application so when i save this one this time i'm not going to get any error message or any message because as you can see it's blank because this message inside will be displayed only when i'm unable to connect to my database now i'm not seeing any error message which means i can able to connect my applications with my database now what is next if you go back to the home.php so i'm going to enter the values here when i click submit i want to send this information to my database so this file or uh, this particular form is found inside this page name called home.php so now i need to collect the value i need to send that value to my database so for the same what i'm going to do on top here i'm going to create a php function a php tag so inside this php tag i'm going to write the logic to collect the information from the form and then i want to send that information to the database remember for the database connection we have this file name called connection.php so if you wanted to send this information to the database first you need to connect to your database for you to connect to your database 
I have already created a file name called connection.php. Now I wanted to include that connection.php file here so that every information that I'm going to collect from the form will be sent to the database. And then next, if you go back to your form, here you have a form where you have all these input fields. So the thing that you are going to do them here is for this form, you are going to include a method. So the method for this particular form can be either get a post. In this case, I'm going to use the form method as post. So what does that mean? Here in the PHP, I'm going to use a function name called is. I'm going to use if. I'm going to use is set as a function. So this is set function is used in PHP to check whether the variable is set or not. Since I'm using the method name here as a post, so I'm going to use post as a method. So when the method is post, what are you going to do them here? If you go to your actual design, you're going to enter the details, but you wanted to store the information into the database only when you click on this button name called submit. So here I'm going to check if that particular submit button is clicked or not, if that particular submit button is set or not. So for that one, what I'm going to do, I'm going to the button name called submit. Here I'm going to add a name property. So the name can be anything. Let's say I'm going to say in this case, BTN. So what does that mean? So up there, I'm going to check whether my button has clicked or not. So remember, I said the name property as BTN. So this one will check if the user has clicked on the submit button or not. So once the user is clicked on the submit button, what is next? We need to store that information into the database. So which information do you want to store them into the database? The information that will be viewed in this text box, this text box and the remaining two text box. Now, how am I going to identify each of these text box? For that, I'm going to include a name property for each of these input fields. So let's say, for example, this is a first text box, which will allow me to enter the first name. So here, I'm just going to add a name property the name property will have a name. So let's say F name. So using this F name, I should be able to collect the value that the user is going to enter into this particular text box. Just like this, even for the other input boxes, I'm going to include the name property with a different name. So this one, I'm going to call this one as a last name. And then for the email, I'm going to add the name property as email. So the next one is a program of study. So let me just add the name property as POS. So what does that mean? So using this name property, I will actually able to have an access to the information that will be submitted into those input boxes. Now I'm going to my PHP file. So the first thing is, if you wanted to collect the value that will be entered into the first name view, I'm going to use this method name called post because that's a method. And then the name property that I gave them there is F name every information that will be entered into that particular text box will be collected and then let's say i wanted to store that information into a variable a variable name can be anything let's say in this case i'm going to say f name likewise we are going to create a variable for the remaining input fields so that we would be able to collect the information from that particular text boxes so this one i'm going to say as last name and then the value will come from this name property l name the next one is an email so even this one, let's say I'm going to name this one as an email. This is simply a variable. This variable name can be anything. It's not necessarily, it has to be same name as this one. It's simply a variable, it can be anything. So here, the name property was POS. So let's say just for the sake of difference, instead of saying POS, I'm just going to call this variable as a course. They're just the same. Now, what does that mean? This if name variable will have an access to the value that will be entered into the first text box. Same way, the remaining variable will have an access to the remaining text boxes. Now, what is next? I want to send this information into my database. When I say I wanted to send this information into my database, basically, I wanted to insert this information into my database. So if you wanted to insert this information into a database, you need to write a query that will be used to insert the data into the database. So for that, I'm going to create a variable. Let, let me say I'm going to call this variable as an SQL. Now I need to write a query that will be used to insert in the database. I'm going to say insert. This is basically an insert query into here. I have to specify the table name. If you go back to your database, 
what is the table name student db is the database name but the table name is stu tbo here according to the query insert into you have to specify the table name that is this now the table has fields what are the fields the table has id we are not going to specify the id because id will be dynamically assigned by the database itself but we have to specify these remaining fields so the name that you are going to pass them there has to be same name as these names that you are given them here so the first parameter is first name remember i'm not going to use the id because id is dynamic it will be done by the database itself the second one is a last name and then the third one is an email and then the final one is pos remember these ones that you are going to pass them here has to same name as this name that you have given them here in the database so for these fields now we need to pass the values the values are coming from where from the user that information is stored where into these variables right so here i'm just going to pass those variables so which means first name is the first variable the second one is an l name variable third value will come from the email variable and then the final value will come from the course variable so when i save this one so now now i have a query then we are saying that every information that i'm going to collect from the user insert them into this view now what is next we need to execute this query so this is a query the next step is to execute this query so for that let's say i'm going to create a variable name called result to execute a query in php there is a built-in function i'm going to say my i query so this particular function will allow us to execute the query so which query do you want to execute this insert query so this insert query is stored where into this variable name called sql so this mysql i query would take two parameter first one is the connection variable because for you to execute the query you need to have an access to the database if you wanted to check if you have an access to the database what can you do you can simply use the connection variable the second one is when you have an access to the database you can actually able to execute the query after executing the query i'm simply going to check if this result variable is successful when i say if successful what i'm going to say i'm just going to simply say echo uh, data inserted successfully so what we are going to do we're trying to check if this information is going to be inserted into the database or not so for that one let's just go back to our design let me just enter some detail i'm going to enter my name let's say the email address is ranger at gmail.com and then the program of study let's say information technology so when i click submit i'm not seeing any message what does that mean i'm unable to send this information to my database the reason why everything that you did them here is correct but remember you're passing these variables right so you're passing this variable but these variables are a character because this variable is going to collect a value so that value will be stored where this first name if you go back to your database you remember the data type of this fuse are watcher what does that mean it is expecting a character now this one you're not sending them as a character you're just sending them everything as a string so if you wanted to say that this information that i'm going to collect from the users are sequence of character so even this one has to be there in the single code just to specify actually i'm collecting the character remember the reason why that we are using single quotes because the data types for these fields are watcher so here you have to use this single quotes so that the value can be stored there now i'm going there i'm sure that you can able to see there are some names that are suggesting joe email address alex gmail.com program of study let's say account and I click submit I'm sure that now you can able to see the message saying data inserted successfully when you go to your database and refresh the database now i'm sure that you can able to see the data for alex so the error before was actually i've done nothing just that i have added this single quotes here because these things are expecting a character as a value no wonder when i was not putting this single quotes it was not actually inserting the values now we are able to insert the data into the database now the next thing is i actually don't want to display this message like data inserted successfully 
because if you go back to the actual design so when i enter the data here so as you can see them here it is dis it is giving me some names from the past history let's say for example you don't wanted to see any of these things you just wanted to enter the details without giving you any suggestions that is a way that you can actually do it so you can go to your html you can go to those text boxes so this is my first text box because it's giving me those suggestions let's say i don't wanted to see them uh, anymore so there is this html property that can be used auto complete and then you can set it to off so when you set this property it is not going to suggest you uh, values in that text box if you wanted to uh, enter anything so i'm just going to put every I, I just wanted to put these things in every text box so that i will not see those suggestions anymore i'm going to save this one let me go there to my browser and then i'm going to refresh so now when I enter this one, you can see it's not suggesting me the names uh, as well as even if I click here, even the emails, it's no longer suggest. Actually in my original design, I didn't include that code. No wonder it was able to giving me those suggestions. Let's say I'm going to use Philip. Last name is let's say Philip Anand. Let's say the email ID is philip at gmail.com. Let's say this guy is doing computer science. When I click submit, I'm not seeing the message as data inserted successfully. Instead, it's taking me to a next page name called display.php. I'm sure that you can able to see. So this display.php is actually displaying the information that I have entered them there, as you can see them here. So this is the same kind of design that I wanted to do. So for the same, what I'm going to do, so here it's displaying the message saying data inserted successfully. Now I don't want to see this message instead i wanted to redirect it to the next page name called display.php so for the same instead of displaying the message here saying data inserted successfully i wanted to go to the next page name called display.php so for that one i'm going to use the header function in php so this header function instead i'm going to specify the location so when when the data is inserted I wanted to go to the page name called display.php. Now, when you run this one, you're not going to see the message name as data inserted successfully. It will take you to the display.php. Since we don't have the page name called display.php, let me create it. So here I'm going to say display.php. So inside, let's say I'm just going to say PHP, something like this. Now, when you Click submit here. Let's say I'm going to put another uh, information. Let's say I'm going to say Mary Stella. And then here I'm going to say Mary at gmail.com. Let's say nursing. So when I click submit, I'm sure that now you're not seeing the message as data inserted successfully. Instead, you can able to see this page name called display.php like this. So now our display.php file should look something like this. So for that, what I'm going to do inside my display.php file, let me just create a basic HTML boilerplate. So inside this head section, so maybe title, we can change them to display page. So inside this title, I wanted to add the bootstrap because I don't want to spend a lot of time working on the CSS. So for the same, I'm going to use the bootstrap link. So if you go back to the home.php page, remember we have included the link for the bootstrap. So I'm just going to copy this and then I'm going to paste them here, just like that. So now this page will have an access to the bootstrap classes. So if you could see the actual design, so this one has a student management system. I'm sure that I can simply use so inside, let me say, I'm just going to create a deal with a class name called container. So inside this class, I'm going to say H1. So this one will be student management system. So for this H1, I'm going to add a class that is coming from the bootstrap. So I'm just going to say text center. I also wanted to add a shadow. That's it. So let me go to my browser and refresh the page to see how does this one would look like student management system actually i don't think so that this class that i have added 
is been included so let me just check of oh, the spelling here it has to be class so when i save this one i'm sure that you would able to see a shadow and then the text is in the center so let's say i wanted to bring this one bit down there so for that same i wanted to add some margin to my container so i wanted to add the margin top and bottom so i'm going to say my that is on the x-axis i wanted to add file so i'm sure that you can able to see this so now we are able to do this i'm sure that even for the div that is a shadow right so what i'm going to do here in my div class i wanted to add the shadow property so for the same let me just copy this one and then i'm going to paste this one here i think it's not bad i think we can just keep the same so from now what we can do the next thing is we need to add this button here so if you wanted to add the button so let me just go back then let me add the button here so the label for this button is add student and then i'm going to use the bootstrap class here just to style the button and then let me just go there and refresh to just to see how does this one would look like okay it looks something like this but the button is here in the center but it's supposed to be there on the left side so i think the mistake that i did here is i think let me just remove the text is equal to center when i save this one i think the button will come to the left side as expected right so the next thing is if you go back to the actual design when i click on this button add student it is taking me back to the home.php page isn't it so so just to do that in the same button just i'm going to add an anchor tag so this anchor tag the link will be i think home.php if you could remember because that's my home page so inside this i'm just going to put this add student so let me save let me go back and refresh i hope you can able to see but i'm unable to see the text so let me just set the text color so just in the same anchor tag so i'm going to add the bootstrap class so i want to set the text to the light color which is white let me go there and refresh i'm sure that now you can able to see the text there when i click on this one i'm sure that now you can go back to the form where you can actually able to add the student information right so the next thing that we need to do them here is if you go to the display.php now we need a table like this so we wanted to display this information like a table or format like this so for that go back to the same bootstrap let me just refresh i don't know what has happened so here in the same search bar i'm just going to type table so when you type table if you scroll down i'm i'm sure that you can able to see different type of tables that you can create using bootstrap but i just wanted to start with the basic one like this so if you wanted to have a table like this the only thing that you need to do is just copy this code here and then paste them here in your body section so maybe after the button paste that table when you save this one maybe you can go back to your browser and refresh so this time you have to go to display.php i'm sure that now you can able to see something like this right so actually we are able to get closer to the actual design but still we need to do something so instead of just adding the margin just to the top and bottom what i want to do is let me add a margin to my x-axis as well let me say it's just three so this one will add the margin to right and left so when i save this one i'm sure that now you can able to see the difference so let me just say this one also five so that it would look exactly like the actual design yeah better like this right so now the next thing is we need to work on this table we have the table with the header in this case by default it can you can able to see hash first last and do but the table header has to be same as this one so for that if you go back to the code just find the 
find the area for that header i'm sure that this is a table head so this one the first one has to be student id second one is a first name so the other one is a last the next one is an email if you could remember and then the next one is you just copy paste this one is going to be course or a program of study this one is going to be operation if you look at the actual design i'm going to save this one I'm gonna refresh my browser now. Now I'm sure that you can able to see the table head that we are looking for, like the actual design. What is next? Now we need to fetch the information from the database and then we should able to display them here. So the whole idea of this system is, instead of you going to the database to see the information, we are creating an interface where we can actually able to add student as well as we can able to update the student information even if you wanted to delete some student information we can able to do it in the same application than you going to the database so this information that you see them here is actually the information that has been stored into the database you don't have to go to the database instead you can do everything here if, when you update the data even the database will be updated when you delete an information from here even the information that that is stored in the database will also be deleted so for that what we need to do is so first we need to have an access to each and every data from the database remember if you wanted to have an access to every information from the database so after the table head so what i'm going to do in the table body i'm just going to create the php tag so the role of this php tag are uh, this php function is going to extract or is going to read every information uh, that has been stored into the database so remember if you wanted to read every information that has been stored into the database in PHP we have a query so the query is select star from the table what does that mean it will select every information from the database and then we can able to have an access to it so I'm going to use that same query select star from the table name what is the table name this is my table name right so using this query i can able to read every information that has been stored into the database now what is next i need to execute this query remember previously we did the same by creating the result variable and then we use the php build in function name called mysql i query method so this same method would take two parameters if you could remember first one is the connection variable another one is the query variable in this case sql so in this case the query will be executed what does that mean when the query is executed we will have an access to the database so this query is basically talking about just get every information from the database so after executing this query what does that mean we should able to have an access to each and every information that has been stored into the database so if you wanted to have an access to each and every information that has been stored into the database remember in database we will have table table will have rows and columns that is used to store the information now we are looking for the information that has been stored into each and every row of the particular table so if you wanted to read that information we are going to use a query name called i'm going to say i'm going to first i'm going to check the condition if this result variable is set what does that mean I wanted to read each and every information from the database. If you wanted to read every information from the database, this is a query that I'm going to use. My SQL I fetch a soak. What does that mean? So this is basically an associative array. So it basically says that go to the database, get every information that has been stored into the database. So in this case, where are we going to get the results from? using this result variable right so let's say i wanted to store this information into a variable name called row it simply means i'm going to print every information that has been stored into the uh, database so now if you wanted to print in the next line the only thing that you can do them is in the next line you can just you can write an echo statement you can write an echo statement so this echo statement remember this is an array so this is an array variable the one that you see them here is what an array variable so I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to paste them. This is an array, so I'm going to use a square bracket. Let's say you wanted to print the first name that has been stored into the database. I'm going to say first name. What is this first name? This first name is basically 
the field that you see them here in the database right so if you go there to the student table i'm sure that this is a first name right so the first name has got three information alex alex and mary so when you go there now so now what are you trying to say just print the first name of that particular array so i'm going there to my page and then i'm going to refresh here there is a error here line number 27 undefined variable connection so if you could see this uh, error here it's saying that you know what you are trying to use this connection variable which is undefined what does that mean i'm trying to execute a database and then i'm saying that yes i'm going to have an access to a database through this connection variable but i have not included this one inside this file so every Every time when you wanted to have an access to the database, make sure that you include the database connection file inside the project. So here I'm just going to include the database connection by using include keyword and then the name of the file is what? Connection.php. So when you save this one, if you go back and refresh the browser, I'm sure that now you can able to print the first name. But remember in my database, I have got three first name two alex one mary but i can able to print only first alex what about the second one if you wanted to print the second one so again you go back you just do the same step so what does that mean same step you have to go to every row and then print the first name so when i do this the second first name will be printed when i do this the third first name will be printed when i go back and refresh Now I'm sure that you can able to see all the three first name that has been stored into the database has been displayed. Now the question to you is this. Imagine you have 100 first names in your database. Are you still going to do the same step? Yes, you can do that, but it will be a tedious task. So to avoid that one, what we can do, we can wrap this particular line of code with the while loop. What does that mean? When you wrap them in a while loop, the while loop will be executed as long as the given condition is true. In the sense, even if you have 1 million data in your database, the while loop can still execute and then it can able to print all the items that has been stored into the database. So here, instead of just using it like this, I'm going to wrap them in a while loop. Just know the reason why that we are using the while loop because if you don't use the while loop, you have to do it manually. So just to avoid the repetition, I'm going to use the while loop. So this while loop, will iterate through that array and then it will able to print so here i have to close this it will able to print all the items of that a particular array so now when i just say echo row first name what does that mean this while loop will able to go through the database and then it will able to print every items in that particular database you see the result is still same but i just don't want to print the first name alone instead I wanted to put in the first name, last name, email address, and the program of study uh, for that particular student. So for that, what do I need to do? Here, simply instead of saying echo row first name, I just don't want it to echo the first name. Yes, I wanted to print the first name. Let's say the first name will be stored into the variable name called f name. In the same way, I wanted to print the rest of the details as well. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste this one is gonna be for the last name remember these values that you are passing them here has to be same name as your database so if you could go back to your database this one has to match with these names in case if you misspell in, in, instead of saying last name let's say you're saying a own name here as a parameter is not gonna work because this name has to same name as a database name so this one, let's say the variable name is L name. So if you wanted to get the email, so here I'm going to say email. Even this one, the database has a column name as email. And then if you wanted to print the course, or that is a program. So let's say I'm going to call this one as a program. But in the database, I mentioned program using POS, right? What does that mean? So now, if you have an access to this variable, you can able to print. For, so let's say, for example, I'm going to say echo. I'm just going to say f name as a variable. What is going to happen? Let's just check. 
I'm going here. I'm going to refresh so I can able to print all the first name. And then let's say I'm just going to have an access to this variable L name. When I save this one, what is going to happen? It will able to print all the last name. I'm sure that you can able to see all the last name. Now I don't want it to display them here. I want them to be displayed here as a table data. So for that, what I'm going to do, since I have an echo, I don't want it to print them right there, but I wanted to display them in a table data, like what you see them here. But if you could see these data here, what are these things are coming from? If you just scroll down, actually these are the things that you can see them there, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy this row because I want to display this information in a row format. I'm going to cut. So here is an echo. So what you need to do, just use this single code and then paste this table data here. The first one here, what you wanted to display in the table? Here you wanted to display the student ID. If you wanted to display the student ID, what you need to do? This one will bring you the first name. So if you wanted to bring the student ID, copy this. Let me on top, put on top of this because I even want to print the student ID in the table, in the database table for the student ID, I say this ID. So let's say even this one, I'm going to say student ID. So if you have an access to this variable, student ID, then this is, I'm going to wrap them in a single code. And then I wanted to put, I wanted to concatenate this variable here with a table head. In the same way, I'm just going to copy this variable. Here I'm going to replace this one with that variable. Uh, make sure to concatenate so that you would able to see the result. So this one again. So the next field is for the last name. So use the last name variable. I hope it makes sense. So the next variable is an email where you can able to iterate through that database and then print all the email addresses for each student. And then we are remaining with the last one, the program of study. So here it's going to be the variable name is program. Let me save. Let me go there and refresh. I'm sure that you can able to see the first three rows have been updated just like the way that you see them here in the data. So what does that mean? We are actually able to display this information from the database into our application as you can see them here. Now what about these remaining two lines? It's simply because this thing is still there so we can remove this part because these are some dummy data that we got it from the uh, bootstrap library. Now let me go there and refresh. I'm sure that now you would be able to see only the data that is coming from the database. Now we need to add two buttons here. If you could see the actual design. So there is two buttons here, one to update, another one is to delete. So let's add those two buttons. If you wanted to add those two buttons, remember those two buttons are part of the table, right? So here, what I'm going to do, after displaying the program, I'm going to add another table data. So this table data this time is going to have two buttons. So I'm going to say button times two. So it will create me two buttons. So one button I'm going to use to update the student information. Another one will be used to delete the student information, right? So now if you go back to your design and refresh i'm sure that you can able to see two buttons uh, so what i'm going to do i'm just going to add some bootstrap classes to these two buttons so let me say class these are basically a bootstrap class so when i save this one let's go and check how does this one is look like i'm sure that now you can able to see the nice button so what is next when i click on this button delete I should be able to delete this information. When I click on this button update, I should be able to update this information. Let's say I just wanted to update the program for the student. Uh, let's say I wanted to update the email address for the student. I should be able to do that. So what does that mean? When I click on this one, I should be able to delete. So when you delete or when you wanted to update, remember you are going to update the information and you are going to delete the information 
based on the student ID, not based on the email address or the first name or the last name because the only unique factor here is the student ID. So if you wanted to update or if you wanted to delete, the only thing that you can target is a student ID. So for that, what I'm going to do, uh, let's say I'm just going to add an anchor tag here for both update and delete. So let me add an anchor tag. So here I'm going to add the href property. So it will go to update.php. So I'm just going to put the update here. What does that mean? When I click on the update button, it will take me to the page name called update.php. In the same way, uh, for the delete, I also wanted to do the same. I just want to delete the text here. So this one, I wanted to make it to delete. So here I'm going to send this particular thing to delete.php. When I save this one, let's go back to the design. Let's refresh. I'm sure that you can able to see the link now. The text is not visible. So for the same, I just wanted to add the bootstrap class on this anchor tab. Now I'm going to add class is equals to text to be light. I just want to copy the same class and then I wanted to put them here in the update. Let me save. Let me go there and refresh. Now I'm sure that you can able to see the button. Now, as I said, when I wanted to delete this item, I can delete this item only based on the student ID. So now, how am I going to do that? How am I going to select a student ID for me to delete this particular information? For that, you can go to the same code just here. Let's start with the delete first, then we'll go back to the update next. So now here, the delete button, I'm going to add a question mark and then I wanted to add an ID for this one. So let's say I'm going to say delete ID. I'm going to add something called delete ID. So this delete ID, what is it going to do? So remember I said we are going to delete based on the student ID. So I'm going to say equals. So which one has an access to the student ID? So this variable here because this is a database ID. So if I can have an access to this variable, actually I can able to target the student ID, right? So I'm going to pass them here, like this. So now what does that mean? Now I have an access to the student ID. So just to show you, let me go there and refresh. When I hover on this button delete, I'm sure that here you can able to, here you can able to see delete ID is equal to one. What does that mean? Now we are actually targeting the ID for each column. So when I hover on this one, I'm sure that delete ID is two, delete ID is three. Now based on that ID, we can able to delete. Even when I click on this one, it will actually take me to the page name called delete. It says not found because I don't have the page name called delete. So let's do this. We can create delete.php file. So within this PHP file, let's see let me save this one. Let me go there and refresh it now. Now that error message has gone. So you can, I'm sure that you can able to see in the URL, delete ID is 01. So when you see something on a URL, what does that mean? The method is get method, isn't it? So when you use a get method, the information will be exposed in the URL. So what we are going to do, so here we need to write the logic to delete that particular selected item. So for that, what I'm going to do, remember I showed you, since I used that ID there, then it was exposed in the URL. So I'm going to say if I'm going to use the method name as is set, and then this method is going to be get because remember the information was exposed in the URL. And then the ID that I gave them here is what? Delete ID, isn't it so? So I'm going to pass this one. If this condition is true, what does that mean? When you wanted to delete a certain item and then the item ID is equals to delete ID, then I'm going to create a variable that is a student ID because that is coming from the get method. The actual ID is deleted ID. You can actually copy this and paste them here. Now, what does that mean? This variable student ID will have an access to 
that specific student ID that you have stored them into the database. Now, if you wanted to delete anything, what do you need to do? You just have to write a delete query, isn't it so? I'm just going to write a delete query now. I'm going to say SQL equals to delete any item. Here is the query delete from the table name. In this case, the table name is student table. And then you wanted to delete based on the student ID. So where the ID, what is this ID? This actually coming from the database field. When this ID is equals to which one now? This variable student ID. So we are simply saying that delete only the database ID matches to this variable student ID. So after that, what is next? Of course, we need to execute the query. If you want to execute the query, remember we were using MySQL I query method. And then this query method would take two parameters as we know. Since you are trying to have an access to this connection variable, the first thing that you need to do is you need to include uh, the file for the connection. So it's going to be connection.php. I hope you remember. So now I will have an access to the connection variable. Now after executing this one, what is next? I'm just going to say if, if this result variable is true, maybe we can just display the message saying item deleted successfully. Or maybe we can say, say deleted. Let me save. Let me go back to my design to check if we can able to delete. So I'm going to refresh this one now. You see, you can able to see deleted successfully. What does that mean? There is that information that I had, Ranjan, has been deleted. So even if you wanted to delete this one, you see, let me say, I just wanted to delete this. When you delete this one, deleted successfully, when you go back, but the, the information is still here. Yeah, it has gone. Actually, it has gone. I think I just have to refresh. So now the thing is, if you go back to the actual design, if I wanted to delete this one, I can delete, but the page is still there. It's, it's still displaying the same page. But here, what I can see them here is just is displaying the message deleted. Then I have to go back to check the data, isn't it? So, so what I'm going to do instead of displaying the message here, echo deleted successfully. I just wanted to remain in the same page even after deleting that one. So I'm going to use the header property. And then here I'm going to say even after deleting that one, just remain in the same display.php. So when I save this one, I'm going there again. After, let me just refresh. Even after deleting this one, the table will be still displayed. Now, if you want to add a student information, you can able to add. I'm going to say Ranjan. When I click submit, it will be added. So if you want to add another student information, let's say for example, when you click submit, the information will be added. So if you wanted to delete, you can delete, the information will disappear, but still you can able to see the display.php file. I hope you have understood how I managed to design this one. So far, we have learned how to insert the data into the database. We have learned how to read the information from the database like this. And then we learned how to delete the information from the database. Now, if you could go back to your database, I'm sure that you can still able to see this information. So all the other information could have been deleted. If you go there and refresh, I'm sure that now you can able to see this is the same information that you see them here in this interface, right? So the, the last one is update, how to update uh, the information from the database. So to update the information from the database, again, we are going to focus on the student ID, which is the unique factor here. Same like the way that we did them here for a delete uh, ID. So I'm just going to copy the same and then I'm going to put them here for update.php. Maybe instead of saying delete ID, so I'm going to say update ID. So same way, we are going to target the student ID uh, in order to delete or update any information. So here you have to create update.php. So in this update.php, if you could actually go to your original design, that one we created, when you click update, what you see them here is a home.php page, isn't it so? 
The only difference is here in the button, instead of saying submit, we have the button named as update. So for the same, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to the home.php page. I'm going to copy everything and then I'm going to paste them here in the update.php. So just for this button, instead of saying submit, I'm going to change this one to update. Let me save this one. Let me go there and refresh. When I click update, it will actually take me to the home.php page. Now, what is next? I should uh, able to update the information uh, on this particular table. To do that, what we need to do is, let's go back to the update.php file. So here, up there, instead of having the query for insert into the database, we need to change this one to an update query. So before that, what do you want to update? You want to update the information that you have selected based on the student ID. So for that one, I'm going to create a variable name called student ID, remember. So that information can be collected using the get method and then this is what update ID. So based on this uh, student ID, now we are going to update our database. So the update query would look something like this. So I'm just going to replace this one with an update query. So I'm going to say update. I wanted to specify the table name. In this case, student table is the table name. And then I'm going to use the set property. Now I wanted to set the student ID in the database. If you could remember the student ID, I used the column as ID, which will be equals to this student ID variable that I have. So this is what I wanted to set. So I'm going to specify this one and then I have to specify the remaining field. So in that case, I have the field name as first name in my database. So here I'm going to say this first name will be collected from this variable, right? So I'm just going to copy this and then I'm going to paste them here. In the same way, I just wanted to do the rest. So for the second name, it's not a second name. If you could remember, if you go back to your database, I'm sure that you can able to see the next field is the last name for this last name the value will come from this variable name called L name and the next one is email for email the value will come from this variable name called email and then the last one is what the last one is POS that is program of study this is how I specified in my database so for this one, the value will come from this particular variable name called course. Finally, according to the update query, you have to specify where you wanted to update the information. Now I wanted to update the information based on the student ID uh, that I'm going to select based on this particular variable. I hope it makes sense. So this is basically an update query. This is a syntax. So I'm going to use update as a keyword. I wanted to update not the whole table, but based on the student ID that I have selected. That's the reason why here I have to specify where the ID should be equal to the ID that you have selected in order to update the information. And then the rest, if you could remember, there is a single code here because the data type of these uh, fields from the data base is a character, a varchar. That's the reason why I had to use this single code. Now, let me just save this one. You can go back to your actual design. So now when you click on this update button to actually, this is actually the original design. Let me just go to our project that we created. So here I'm going to my display.php page. Now when I click on this update, it is actually taking me back to this form. But if you can see one thing in my actual design, when I go back to the update.php page is actually giving me the information. So in this case, I don't want, I don't have to re-enter every information because the information is being displayed here. So if you wanted to update this information from nursing to any other programming, you can just edit this one so that you can able to update. But in this case, it's not like that. In this case, I have to re-enter every information that you're looking for. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to bring in the data from the database so that 
I can able to see which information that I wanted to update from this one. So for that one, uh, up there, now this one will able to give you an access to the data that is associated with a student ID. Now if you wanted to bring in all the information uh, that are part of that database row, what you need to do? We need to use a query. So if you wanted to print or if you wanted to display every information from the database, remember we have the query uh, that can be used to do that. So what is a query? If you could remember, we use the query name as select star from the table name. What is the table name in this case? This is a table name, right? So now, again, we don't want to print every information. So when I click update, I don't want to print every information here. I just wanted to display the information uh, that is part of that particular row that I wanted to update. If you wanted to see the information that are part of that particular row alone. So here I'm going to use where as a keyword. I just wanted to display the information that is part of that same particular row. So for that, I'm going to specify like this. I hope it makes sense. I'm not going to bring in every information from that database, but I'm just wanted to bring in the data that is associated with that particular row that I wanted to update, right? So now I hope you know the next step is to execute the query. If you wanted to execute the query, we use result variable. Uh, it's not necessarily it has to be result. The variable name can be anything. So if you wanted to execute a query in PHP, remember we use this function name called MySQL iQuery. And then as you know, this MySQL iQuery will take two parameters. The first one is a connection variable. And then the second one is the variable that has a query, in this case, SQL. So if you wanted to use this connection variable, make sure to include the file for the connection variable. In this case, query has been executed. Now, if you wanted to bring in the detail, what you need to do? Remember, even previously when you were seeing this display.php, we use this function, right? What does that mean? So this function will able to have an access to each and every items of that particular row. So I'm just going to copy this one, this line of code. And then I'm going to put them here. So in this case, I'm not going to use a while loop. Remember, if you could remember correctly, I said we are using while loop because I wanted to iterate through each and every row of data from that database. In this case, I don't want to print each and every items in that particular database. I just wanted to update that particular row that I have selected from the database so that the information can be updated. So in this case, I'm not going to use a while because if I use while, I'm trying to bring in all the data. So I don't want to bring in all the data. I just wanted to bring in the data that are associated with this particular row. So for that, I'm just using this variable row and then this variable row will have an access to the information that is part of that particular row alone. So now from here, what do you need to do? It's simple. So from that uh, row, you wanted to bring in the information for the first name, last name, email address and program of study. So for that, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to the same display.php. I'm just going to copy this part here. And then I'm going to the update file and then I'm going to paste them here. So what does that mean? So go to that row, just get the first name, last name, email address and program of study and store them into these variables. That's it. Now what is next? I think that's it. We have managed to do it. Now what is next? So if you go back and refresh, Still, the information is not displayed here. Why? Because here we need to use a HTML property or an attribute. So what do I mean to say you have to use a HTML attribute? Now, let's say I'm going to this first input box where I'm, where I'm going to display the first name. So here I'm going to say the property name as value and then I'm going to say Ranjan as a value. So when I save this one, let's go and refresh to see what will happen. I'm sure that you can able to see Ranjan is being displayed here. So in this case, I don't want to display the result as Ranjan. Instead, I wanted to display the information that has been stored into the database. So to do that, here I'm going to use a PHP tag. This value, I'm going to use a PHP tag. Make sure to close that one. So here I'm going to use echo because I wanted to print that information. Now, what do you want to print here? I wanted to print the information for the first name from the database. So if you wanted to print that information, where is that information is found? In this particular variable name called fname. So I'm going to copy this one. 
and then I'm going to paste them here. So what does that mean? When I save this one, you go back and refresh. Now I'm sure that you can able to see this name called Thatcher. Where is this information is coming from? It's actually coming from the database, isn't it so? So now if you wanted to print the last name, what do you need to do? In the same way, just copy this and go to the second one for the last name, paste them here. So this time the variable has to be a name. Go to the next one. Here you wanted to print the email. Put email. So the last one is what? Program of study. Paste this one here. What is the variable? Did I create them here? For the variable, a variable for the program of study is program. Just copy this one and paste them. So where uh, this one, I'm just going to use that variable so that I can able to print the program from the database now when i go back and refresh i'm sure that you can able to see the default value in this case if i wanted to change the program or if i wanted to update the program from nursing to let's say accounting and then when you click update i think there is an error here uh, line number 19 so the error here is simply because instead of using one dollar just check i have used double dollars that's the reason why there is an error let me save and go back i'm going to refresh click continue and there is another error now on the same line let me check again i think i did the same mistake here even here instead of one dollar i had used double dollars let me save and try to refresh now i'm sure that you can able to see the information has been updated so if you don't follow this method or if you don't bring in this aspect here and then storing the results in a variable and then using this value property to display the result what will happen so when you click update you're not able to see this default information the benefit of using this default information will help you to just update the information that you wanted to update instead of you entering the uh, details again this is about guys i hope you like this video if you like this video don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you have not subscribed the channel yet please do subscribe thank you